This is the 2019 Mazda MX-5. More specifically, it's the RF model with the retractable hardtop. Now, the MX-5 has been around since 1989 and has earned a stellar reputation for being affordable, reliable, but most of all, a great driver's car. In terms of design, the first three generations had almost bubble-like shapes, and this ND or fourth generation model, it retains the iconic MX-5 look. But with the adoption of Kodo design, there's sharp creases and angles added to the bodywork. For 2019, the MX-5 has been updated, with the headlining act being a more powerful 2.0-litre Skyactiv G engine, replacing the old 1.5 on all but the base model. That means power is now at 135 kilowatts and torque is at 205 newton meters. The steering column is also reach adjustable by 30 millimeters. Our RF model includes these two haunches, which rides from the back up to the driver's head. Now, whilst it looks great, it plays a practical role as well in reducing the amount of roof needed to retract back. Naturally, a hard top takes up more room than a soft top, so by doing this, cargo room is unaffected, as you'll see later. Talking about styling, the MX-5 is beautiful. Mazda have been killing it in the styling department over the last few years, and this is no different. It looks even better in person, especially with this Soul Red Crystal paint. And the best thing about it is, it's stylish without being obnoxious. You can take the roof down and people won't hate you for it. There's really something quite lovable about this small size and stature. After you gracefully get inside the car, this is when you notice that the MX-5 is missing a few things that you might take for granted. Let's start with the fact that there's no glove box. There's also no bottle storage in the doors. So where do you put your stuff? Your phone goes in this tray, which is handily next to the two USB ports. There is a center cubby big enough for a pair of sunglasses and a garage remote. And there's also two coin slots. And between the driver and front passenger seat, there is a decent sized compartment. Essentially, this is the glove box in the car. You can even lock it like a traditional glove box. And how big is it? Well, if you watch my videos, you know what this is. This is our Cho bottle we use for tests, and even this fits inside. Lucky, because it doesn't fit anywhere else in the car. There are also two cup holders, but you can see that they're placed behind my shoulder, which makes it hard for me to reach with my left or right hand whilst driving without twisting my whole body over. Luckily, Mazda thought of that because they are removable. So if you have no front passenger, or if you don't like them very much, you can put the cup holder right next to the gear stick, which allows for easy access to your water bottle. Some clever engineering. <laughs> In front of me is a really nice three-spoke steering wheel. It's leather wrapped with contrasting red stitching. And the leather they've used is really soft. It's softer than the one used on the CX-3, uh, which I reviewed a few weeks ago. And on the left controls for media, Bluetooth phone, and cruise control. On the right, there's color matching for the interior, and it looks fantastic, the soul red crystal coming through into the cabin, much better than just a gray piece of plastic over the door card. The air vents are also pretty neat. They look like little jet engines, and you can switch them off and rotate them. And there's two for the driver and one for the front passenger. There's also one blended into the design of the dashboard. And you can face either person or switch it off completely. In the center is the seven inch Mazda infotainment system. It's exactly the same as all of the other cars and all the functions are identical. So in the center, there's communication where you can connect Bluetooth phone. And you can dial through voice or importing the contacts list. AM and FM along with digital radio, AHA, Stitcher and Bluetooth streaming. However, the real fun can be had when you go into settings because this has to be one of the most customizable systems ever put into a car. Let me explain. So display, you can change brightness and contrast. That's very normal. We move into safety. So smart city brake support, you can set the volume of the warning. In blind spot monitoring, you can also set the volume of the warning. In lane departure, not only can you set the sound, the type of sound, either a beep or a rumble, and the volume, but you can also set when it warns you, often, medium, or rare. And traffic sign recognition, it'll alert you if you go over the speed limit, but you can also customize the alert threshold to give you a bit of a leeway. Now you might have seen me skipping menus as I was scrolling. That's because in order for me to reach the controller, my hand has to go all the way back and rest on these cup holders. That's why the fact that they're removable makes even more sense. 
three stage heated seats for the driver and front passenger, but on our 35 degree day, we really don't need those. Two USB ports, an auxiliary jack, and an SD card slot, which is used for navigation. Next to that is the toggle for raising and lowering the roof. So I've got my stopwatch here. Let's see how long it takes for the roof to come down. Set the camera. Okay, ready and go. I'm gonna wait for the beep. There you are, just over 14 seconds. The roof is also completely automatic, including the latching mechanism. And when you're operating the roof, there's a real-time graphic of exactly what's going on at any given time. And they've even included that tiny little bit that folds over. How cool is that? So you can supervise this whole process without ever needing to crane your neck over. Now a big part of what makes the MX-5 such a great car to drive is its weight distribution. Most cars are front-engined and front-wheel drive, which means most of the heaviest components are at the front and the center of gravity is shifted forward. That's an issue when it comes down to handling, because most front-wheel drive cars are susceptible to understeer. But what Mazda has done is achieve an almost 50-50 weight distribution with the MX-5. An example of how they've done that, if we have a look under the bonnet again, notice how far back the engine is. It's behind the front axle and this reduces the weight at the nose. And to let you know just how fanatical they went, this 50-50 weight distribution is achieved with a tank of petrol and the driver is taken into the account as well. Kudos to the engineering team. Now what you're about to see is me forgetting just how much taller I am than the car while setting up the camera angle. Around the back, as mentioned before, Mazda's ability to fit the entire roof mechanism into just this section of the car means that cargo area is unaffected at 130 litres. To open the boot, you need the key. And when it pops open, it reveals a surprisingly deep space. I mean, you're not going to get suitcases in the back, but a couple of bags of shopping will go in no problem. And also, if you accidentally run to the hardware store with the MX-5 and you pick up a 3-in-1 leaf blower, it'll also fit in the back. Because it's also wide, our slider can pop straight in as well. There's a rear light, but in Mazda's quest to save space, there is no spare tire. You get a fixer flat kit, but we all know how well those work. So if you get one of these, you might want to be friends with roadside assistance, just in case one of your tires goes pop. I really like spending time in the MX-5. The problem is my six foot three body frame doesn't quite fit. Legroom is just okay, but the top of my head when the roof is down goes over the front windscreen. So when I'm driving at speed, the top of my head gets blown around like crazy. And when the roof is latched, I have to drive around in a slightly crouched position to stop my head from hitting the top of the roof liner, which puts my knees very close to the dashboard. And because it's a manual, sometimes I find myself hitting the steering column when shifting gears. But I put up with it because driving the MX-5 is truly a great experience, as I shall now explain. There's a reason why the MX-5 has a cult following, because my goodness does it drive well. The more powerful engine really adds to the fun factor, and it can now be classified as quick. Throw it into a corner and you get a sensation that you never experienced before unless you've driven a 50-50 weight balanced car. As you turn in, the car feels like it rotates around your waist, and it also means that you can take corners fast and always feel in control. My one complaint is that I wish this steering had some more feel. It's light as it should be, but it could be more communicative. The 0 to 100 sprint takes 6.8 seconds, a big improvement from the 8.3 seconds in the older 1.5. The engine also really likes to rev, especially when you get higher in the range. It makes a sound that's always egging you to keep going. And that 17 extra kilowatts of power comes in at 1,000 RPM higher than before, whilst the 5 Nm of extra torque comes at 600 RPM lower. And that's due to, I'm going to make sure I get this right, lighter pistons and con rods, reduced mechanical resistance with changes to the piston rings, an increased throttle diameter, enlarged exhaust ports, intake manifold revisions, and a new low-inertia dual-mass flywheel. Essentially what all of that means, it's faster. 
On the highway, the hard roof helps in absorbing noise. And whilst I wouldn't recommend driving your MX-5 on a crunchy road, at speed, the low center of gravity keeps the car hunkered to the ground, even with its light weight. The magic is in the simplest of setups. Rear wheel drive, slick gearbox, great steering, low weight. And the best part is you can have all of this fun whilst doing road legal speeds. And that's the 2019 Mazda MX-5. It's a fantastic car. It looks great, handles great, and is equipped with some of the best safety gear as standard for a sports car. There's big expectations when a car maker redesigns a classic, and Mazda have hit the nail on the head. Just make sure you fit. If you've enjoyed the video, help us out by giving us a like, make sure you're subscribed, and hit the bell to get notified for new videos.